Hello learners, welcome to today's lesson. It is on global environmental issues of our environmental science course. As we already know that much has happened to damage our environment and environment destruction has caused by humans is a global problem. It does not understand these problems do not understand any political boundaries. There has been a massive natural disaster, climate change, change in the well, weather, etc. Hence, it becomes necessary for all of us to be aware of environmental problems that our planet is facing. After completing this lesson, the, you will be able to understand the following objectives. One, list the various global environmental issues, differentiate between species, genetic and ecosystem diversities, explain the cause of biodiversity loss, co-relate greenhouse effect with global warming and enumerate the causes and effects of global warming on the biotic and abiotic components, list the strategies to cope up with global warming, explain the cause and effect of ozone depletion, explain desertification and identify the major causes of desertification, describe the natural and man-made causes of acid rain, its ill effects on living and non-living components of the environment and the strategies to prevent. State the problems related to oil spills, nuclear disaster and hazardous waste. Now on the screen are the major global environmental issues that we are going to touch today. First is greenhouse effect and global warming. The term greenhouse effect has been derived from a phenomenon that occurs in a greenhouse. A greenhouse looks like a small glass house that is used for growing plants especially during winters in its, its glass panel let the sunlight in that is absorbed inside releasing heat radiations. But the, these heat radiations cannot escape out of the glass panel. Thus the greenhouse warms up. The buildup of heat is sufficient to allow plant growth even in very cold winter season. The phenomenon of heat built up inside a glass chamber from the absorption of solar radiation is called greenhouse effect. It is a naturally occurring phenomenon that is responsible for heating of earth's surface and allowing flourishing of life. Here is a depiction of a greenhouse in use. Without greenhouse effect, the average temperature at surface of earth would have been minus 18 degrees centigrade rather than the present average of 18 degrees centigrade. Once again friends, from minus 18 to it is 18 degrees centigrade. In order to understand the greenhouse effect, let us understand the fate of energy of sunlight that reaches the outermost atmosphere of our earth. Clouds and gases reflect about one fourth of the incoming solar radiation and absorb some of it but almost half of it falls on the earth's surface heating it while a small portion is reflected back. Earth's surface re-emits heat in the form of infrared radiation but major part of it does not escape into space as atmospheric gases such as carbon dioxide and methane absorb a major fraction of it. Let me remind you friends here, the greenhouse gases are many more which we are going to focus little later. These molecules then, that is the greenhouse gas molecules then radiate heat energy and a major part of which again comes to earth's surface, thus heating it up once again. This cycle is repeated many a times. These gases are commonly known as greenhouse gases as they are responsible for the greenhouse effect. This is a pictorial depiction of what is happening on the earth's surface. Observe the diagram very carefully. Major solar radiations, about half of it, about 50 percent of it finally falls onto the earth's surface heating it. As a result of this heat up, the earth re-emits the heat in the form of infrared radiation. These are long wavelengths of energy. Some of it is absorbed by the greenhouse gases instead of allowing them to be re-emitted into the space, thus heating up the earth's surface which are reflected back many a times. Before 
industrialization, simple human activities did not cause any significant increase in the atmospheric temperature. Due to urbanization and industrialization, these greenhouse gases have increased significantly in the atmosphere in recent years. This is a comparison between the earlier situation where the natural greenhouse effect was occurring, heating up our earth, making it habitable and with the modern times when humans enhanced greenhouse effect heating up the earth tremendously. We are all very familiar with these global warming effects. Very recently incessant rain in southern and eastern parts of our country are resulting into disruption of life. This is just a summary this depiction of the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Major part of it is by the occupied by carbon dioxide, it is about 81 percent. Next comes the methane gas which is about 11 percent followed by nitrous oxide 6 percent and a smaller volume is of fluorinated gas that is about 3 percent. Now this defects the sources of the greenhouse effects and their source of release. Carbon dioxide is the primary one. Burning of fossil fuels, solid waste, trees, wood products as a result of certain chemical reactions like manufacturing and cement also deforestation releases carbon dioxide. Methane, it is emitted during production and transport of coal, natural gas and oil. Decay of organic waste in municipal solid waste landfill burning fossil fuel and solid waste and landfill. Third is nitrous oxide emitted during agricultural and industrial activities also during combustion of fossil fuel and solid waste. And lastly fluorinated gases we are familiar with CFC as one of them, hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, sulfur hexafluoride are emitted from a number of industrial processes such as refrigeration, aeropropylene, solvents, insulation foams, etc. All of them are responsible for contributing towards higher amounts of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Causes of global warming, we are quite familiar with most of these causes. Number one is population growth, then followed by deforestation, burning of organic matter, excessive use of fertilizers, burning of fossil fuels, all these lead to increased carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Consequences of global warming, climate change, melting of polar ice cap, melting of ice glacier, warming up of ocean water, rise in sea level because of thermal expansion of sea water and melting of polar ice caps. Then flooding and erosion of coastal areas because of rising sea level, inundation of low regions of earth like Netherlands, Bangladesh, etc. More violent weather conditions, we are becoming more and more familiar with hurricanes, storms, tornadoes, etc. Change in regional and local weather pattern, change in rainfall pattern, effect on natural ecosystems and wildlife. Many arctic species may not be able to adapt themselves to the changing environment and they perish. Decline in agricultural production. A pictorial dep depiction to show the effect of global warming. You can observe ice caps are melting, there is disturbance in the season, the spring arrives earlier, there is warming of the atmosphere, there is more drought and wildfires as a result. Then there is thawing of the permafrost. We are used to learn that permafrost are the ice glaciers which are permanently in ice stage but even they are getting affected. This changes the growth of plant and animal life on our earth. Strategies to cope up with greenhouse effect and global warming. We cannot stop rise of carbon dioxide completely but we can definitely slow it down. More fuel efficient cars drive them less and drive them smart. Use more energy efficient appliances, switch off your lights, TVs, etc. when not in use. Improved insulation to decrease the fuel burn to heat up or cool your homes. Development, implementation of non-fossil fuel alternatives like wind and solar powers. 
stopping deforestation around the world, supporting and undertaking tree plantation afforestation will keep that carbon in the forest rather than sending it back into the atmosphere as the trees are burnt or decay are not replaced by more. Planting large areas with trees will consume CO2 as long as they are growing till the forest matures. Reduce, reuse, recycle, this is very, very important if we can really practice it in our everyday life, will reduce a lot of wastage that we create. Moreover, leaders, local planners, f farmers, health organizers, they need to recognize the changing climate and rising sea levels as they make plans for the future. Our citizens need to be educated as to likely changes and how best to deal with the changing conditions. Encourage others to conserve energy. Another pictorial depiction showing the result of changing global scenario. Our next topic is biodiversity. In our biosphere, immense diversity exists not only at the species but at all levels of biological organizations starting from macromolecules within the cells to biomes. Biodiversity refers to the total number of species found in a sea in any particular area or region. Of the combined biodiversity at all levels of biological organization, the three most important levels are genetic, species and ecological levels. Let us look at them. Genetic diversity includes all the varieties that exist within a biological species. For example, India has more than 1000 varieties of mango and more than 50,000 genetically different, different uh, strains of rice. Next, species diversity. It is the diversity at the species level. Western Ghats have a greater amphibian species diversity than the Eastern Ghats. And the lastly, it is the ecological diversity which is at the ecological level. An example of ecological diversity on global scale would be the variations in ecosystems such as deserts, forests, grasslands, wetlands and oceans. Ecological diversity is the largest scale of diversity and within each ecosystem there is a great deal of both species and genetic diversity. This is the pictorial depiction and comparison between the three different levels of biological variation. First one is the genetic diversity. On the left are the different varieties of butterflies within a species and the right shows the maize cobs, the bhutta, the various forms of bhutta cobs that are available, they are genetic diversities. Next is the species. We are very familiar with the wide diverse species that we have both in plant and animal life. And last is the ecosystem. On the left is the ocean with corals being depicted and the right shows the forest land with very, very different diverse forms of living organisms. Main causes of biodiversity losses, they are introduction of non-native species that is which do not belong to that particular area. We have two very outstanding examples. One is the Parthenium, the carrot grass and the other one is the hyacinth, the water hyacinth which were brought to our country as ornamental plants and the, that is the hyacinth but the carrot grass came unintentionally along with some grains which were imported into our country. But they have spread widely around the native lands of our country and they are actually doing it at the cost of our original native species. Next is the pollution. We are very familiar with the air, land and water pollution affecting the biodiversity. Then next is the environmental degradation. Friends, global warming, UV radiation, oil spills, all of them do not take our living species very kindly. Next, over exploitation. Just a small example, fish is retrieved from aquatic environment, but natural production of newer number that is more and more biodiversity is through reproduction. If we catch too many fish species and do not let them to breed in natural way, there will be a time when the entire species will go extinct. Habitat loss, we are cleaning, clearing the 
forest lands for our industrial requirement, residential requirements, where will the organisms that were inhabiting them originally go? They finally enter the extinction list. Next topic is ozone layer depletion. It just depicts the solar radiation with UV lights coming and striking our earth's surface. Friends, you all know UV radiation are protected by the ozone layer. It is a natural shield. Ozone layer is found in the form of a very thin layer in the lower portion of the stratosphere from about 20 to 30 kilometers from the earth's surface. 90% of atmospheric ozone is present in this layer. Ozone is naturally formed and destroyed both in our atmosphere. How does it take place? Atmospheric oxygen gets photolyzed by UV rays to form free oxygen. Oxygen atoms so produced are very reactive. One oxygen atom reacts with one molecule of oxygen of the atmosphere to form an ozone. At the same time, natural destruction of ozone also takes place. Ozone reacts with oxygen radical and gets reduced to molecular oxygen, the reactions show. So, the O3 and O2 cycles are continuously taking place in our atmosphere. Since 1970, levels of stratospheric ozone have thinned markedly over certain zones, particularly over the Antarctic region. It contains the most productive marine ecosystem. These are four pictures on your screen taken by a satellite from ranging from 79 to 89 to 99 to 2009 and you can see the gradual disappearance of the nat normal ozone that is depicted by orange and red color. In the latest one it is almost blue which shows the thinnest layer of ozone. Here on your screen it is just a depiction that shows the effect of disappearance of ozone layer. If the ozone layer in the atmosphere disappears completely, then all the harmful ultraviolet radiations coming from the sun would reach the earth and not only harm hundreds of animals and plants, it will also damage the other structures. Next, causes of ozone depletion. Ozone layer can be destroyed both by natural and man-made causes. Hydrogen oxide, nitrogen oxide, methane, hydrogen gas, chlorine monoxide are some of the natural causes. Any human activity that leads to release of chlorine atoms in the atmosphere can cause ozone destruction in the stratosphere very efficiently. Most damaging among them such agents are the human made chlorofluorocarbons, we in short call them as CFCs. and hydrochlorofluorocarbons or HCFCs which are used as refrigerant in aerosol cans etc. Halons used in firefighting, carbon tetrachloride and methyl chloroform used as solvents also add to this effect. Let us look at the process. The red coloration on your screen depicts the sun releasing the ultraviolet radiations which reach our atmosphere. CFC released enters the ozone layer, ultraviolet radiation strike the CFC molecule and break away leaving the chlorine from the CFC molecule. So, you have a free chlorine. This chlorine atom collides with ozone molecule pulling an oxygen atom from it. Chloride atom and oxygen atom join to form chlorine monoxide. A free oxygen atom pulls the oxygen atom off the chlorine monoxide molecule to form oxygen molecule and free chlorine atom is again ready to attack another ozone molecule and the cycle is repeated and finally leads to ozone depletion. CFCs are not consumed in the reaction but remain in the stratosphere to continue the destruction of ozone. Catalytic destruction of ozone by chloride and bromine over Antarctic has resulted in formation of ozone hole. Without ozone shield, increased dose of UV radiation will reach earth's surface and cause harm to all living beings. However, a small dose of UV is also necessary for well-being of living beings. UVB promotes synthesis of vitamin D. UV radiation also act as germicidals. 
harmful effects of UV radiation. They affect human health, they also affect plant life, they also show their effect on non-living material and other organisms. Here is a total tabulation of the effects that UV radiation would create on human life. Growth of human organisms is affected by increased levels of ozone. UV rays are known as known mutagens and cause DNA mutations. So excessive radiations are not only harmful to human beings but also to all living organisms. This shows the effect of increased UV radiations on plant life, reduced growth of plants, they inhibit their metabolic reactive actions, reduced forest productivity, reduced crop yield, inhibit photosynthesis resulting in stunted growth of plants. This is just another pictorial depiction, a destruction of phytoplanktons. What are the preventive measures? Global awareness and action on part of the world community in the form of Helsinki Convention in 1989 and next is the Montreal Protocol 1990s have had some successful impact on this front. A complete ban of CFCs and other such chemicals is recommended. Use of HCFCs recommended as a temporary substitute for CFCs as they are relatively less harmful on ozone layer but not completely safe. Desertification is our next topic. Destruction or diminution of biological potential of the land which becomes drier and drier ultimately leads to formation of desert. The pictures show on the right is on the way of desertification and the left shows because of lack of water in the soil the situation that arises. Friends more details of this are already discussed in lesson number 9. Here is a tabulation of the effect of desertification either by human activities or due to climatic change. Desertification caused by physical factors because of change in the climate, the soil erosion takes place, the exposed soil is easily removed by wind or water, changing rainfall pattern intense rain or lack of rain either way damage the soil and drought. All these factors lead to desertification. Human factors. First and foremost is the overpopulation. More people in an area means more food, more inputs, more pressure on land leading to deforestation gives rise to erosion and then leading to newer new and newer farming practices, over cultivation, grow too much without replenishing the soil, it becomes exhausted. Over grazing can destroy vegetation. On your screen you can see the cattle being uh, using a green pasture. Next is salting due to irrigation. Irrigated water brings dissolved salts in it. Accumulation of excessive dissolved salts in the soil make the soil unfit for agriculture. The picture here is of the sprinkler being used in the modern days. Stripping the land of natural resources, that is too much of mining, etc., also damages our soil. How do we come to know about desertification? What are the indications? Declining groundwater table, then Salination of soil and near surface soil water, reduction in extent of surface water in streams, ponds and lakes or in other words drying up of ponds and lakes, unnaturally high rates of soil erosion, damage to native vegetation, the, all these contribute gradually to desertification. Friends, our next topic is acid rain. Acid rain is the deposition of acidic components in rain, fog, mist, snow or dry particles caused by atmospheric pollution. Acid precipitation is more acidic than normal. That is normal pH is around 7. These have a pH around 5.6 or could be lower as low as 4. Acid rain is a mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid. This is a depiction of the acid rain. It can be in the form of wet deposition which is acidic water received through rain, fog and snow or it can be dry deposition 
that is the wind blown acidic gases and particles in the atmosphere they are settled down on the ground. On your picture you will have the VOC label that is volatile organic compound or hydrocarbon NOx represent nitrogen oxides. This again on the left side the two diagrams are the sources of acid rain. So you have sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides produced due to man made sources that is the industries etc factories which emit these gases and natural source would be the volcanic eruptions etc both of them release NO2 and SO2 in the atmosphere. All these gases go and built up the gaseous pollutants in the atmosphere. In addition there are particulate pollutants also in the atmosphere either of them may drop down to the ground that is earth surface in the form of dry deposition or if they come along with the cloud water precipitation they form the wet deposition. Natural sources of acid rain are the volcanoes or lightning, man made causes of acid rain are burning of the fossil fuel like coal, natural gas and oil that are buried in the soil and they are burnt in industrial processes, automobiles and power plants all of them lead to acid rain. What are the effects of acid rain? They damage the terrestrial and aquatic vegetation, deplete the fertility of soil and soil microbe activity, cause respiratory problems, destroy marine life and discolor or destroy buildings and statues, sculptures, etc. Strategies to cope up with acid rain. Increase the use of natural gas and renewable resources and reduce the use of coal. Use low sulfur fuel, use washed coal or use alternative energy sources like solar, wind or geothermal energy. Oil spills is our next global issue. Accidental discharge of petroleum in ocean or estuaries is called oil spill. The slide shows different examples of oil spill that are repeatedly being focused in our news. Causes of oil spill. It primarily starts with drilling in the ocean for oil. So we start with left side oil drilling operation, then oil refinery then offshore oil mining or ultimately if all the oil is being put in a tanker and shipped across the globe and that ship gets capsized it will be stranded mid of the ocean and oil gets spilled over there at times. Effects of oil spill, it forms a thick layer called slick which floats on the surface of sea and affects oceanic ecosystem. Friends we all know oil is lighter than water and it forms a cover over the water as a result cuts off the oxygen supply for the organisms which are in water. Extremely harmful to coral life damage the marine biodiversity. Nuclear disaster is another global problem. Nuclear energy offers an alternative to many of the environmental and social problems no doubt, but it also introduces serious problems of its own. Nuclear plants pose potential danger of accident that may release hazardous radioactive material into the environment. The problems are twofold with nuclear reactors. One is the nuclear disaster and fallout and second is safe disposal of nuclear waste generated by nuclear plants. The detrimental effects of nuclear leakage could be quick or slow. We are very familiar with Hiroshima and Nagasaki episodes during Second World War. This is just a depiction the type of energy that is released when nuclear blasts take place. This is a depiction of a uh, nuclear test at Naveda test site where by mistake radioactive materials were released from the Bainberry nuclear test site. Radiation contaminates all ways around a uranium mine, around an enrichment facility, around a nuclear plant and around nuclear waste de deposition sites. Consequences of nuclear disaster. 
nuclear explosion produces both immediate and delayed destructive effects. It inflicts damage over an extended period ranging from hours to centuries and can cause adverse effect in locations very distant from the site of detonation. This is another picture showing the destruction caused by a natural reason. Nuclear disaster can produce climate issues because of high temperature of the nuclear fireball cause large amounts of nitrogen oxide to form from the oxygen and nitrogen in the atmosphere and this can damage our ozone layer. Quick or slow impact of nuclear radiation, I have just listed four on your screen. We are familiar with the names of Chernobyl in US and Fukushima Daiichi, this was more recent, caused during the tsunami in 2011 and there was massive disruption in spite of the fact that precautionary measures were in place. But the third and the fourth point that is radiotherapy accident in Costa Rica that occurred in 1996 is a reminder that even during radioactive treatments that are given often that is nuclear therapy that we commonly call it as can go wrong at times and cause damage. Very recently in Delhi, Mayapuri's area recorded an accident and this accident was actually due to an improper disposal of materials containing radioactive material from a research lab. Hazardous waste is any substance that is present or released in or into the environment causing substantial damage to public health and welfare of the environment. It is called very hazardous when it could cause serious health effects from a single exposure. Hazardous substances may display any one of the following parameters that is corrosivity, reactivity, ignitability and toxicity. The table shows the details of these four reactions. Hazardous waste and its disposal effect as is given on 14.5 table of your lesson. And this is a total summary of what would happen on human health and other aspects of our bioreserve if climate changes. These are some of the international efforts that are to be kept in mind, the Montreal Port Protocol, the Earth Summit and the Kyoto Protocol, which are very important for global protection. Thank you friends and hope you have enjoyed today's lesson.